Good evening and welcome to Primetime News coming to you live and direct from the News First studios here in Colombo. I'm Bernadine Jai Singha. Good evening, Shalan. Good evening, Bernadine, and a very good evening to all our viewers out there. We've got the latest of news lined up for you here tonight. Let's first start off with a look at your top stories. More than 130,000 people affected by disaster situation over the past five days. Death toll climbs to 16. Forecast shows more heavy showers for the Sabragamwa, Western, Central and Northwestern provinces and the Gaul and Mathura districts. JVP submits proposed 20th Amendment to the Constitution to the Speaker. Police say underworld gang responsible for the assassination of Municipal Councillor K. Ranjan Silva. Deputy Minister Tevara Peruma on the warpath. The Police Special Task Force says the assassination of K. Ranjan Silva, a member of the Dehivala Mount Lavinia Municipal Council, was carried out by an underworld gang. A senior police SDF officer claimed the shooting was carried out by the associates of the underworld figure known as Anju. He added that investigations have revealed that the shooting was carried out by two men travelling in a white car. MMC K. Ranjan Silva was shot and killed in the Nyanindra area in Ratmalana last night. Two others who were injured in the shooting are being treated at the Colombo South Teaching Hospital. The 62-year-old father of three is also the father of popular national cricketer Dhananjaya Silva. I saw two men. One was in the back and one was in the front. They pointed a T-56 at my father and opened fire. I saw my father running forward but they drew closer and opened fire again. There was a person known as Kudulansia in this area. Kudulansia was shot and killed in front of the court. His brother is now running the drug peddling racket and it is three times bigger now. It was his brother, who is known as Kudumanzu, that did this. He is the one who shot my father. He had even posted on Facebook about how he would hit us. I have a screenshot of this. One of the injured men is a labourer working at the DMMC while the other is a fisherman. The hospital spokesperson said both men are out of danger. The Mount Lavinia police and the police SDF are investigating the assassination. Floods and collapsing earth embankments following heavy rainfall have severely inconvenienced the general public for six straight days. I am currently at the middle of the Thabbu Van Thambapani village. The water here is about three to four feet deep. The disaster management center and the irrigation department and the navy have commenced rescue operations in the area. The Thambapani one settlement in Thabbu was completely submerged after the spill gates were opened. About 50 homes in the Putlam town have also been inundated. The hatton Colombo main road was closed in Diagala today due to the threat of a landslide. Several low-lying areas in Horana have also been inundated. Our correspondent noted that Ballapitiya, Anguruvathota, Veeravatta, Kandana, Mangalasiripura and other areas have been submerged. Several roads around Horana are also underwater. Several parts of Badegama, which were inundated when the Gin River broke its banks, are still underwater. These images were captured from Badegama, Inimangkanda and Akuretia this morning. Many rivers, including the Kalu River, Kalni River and the Gin River, overflowed following the heavy downpours. Low-lying areas in Madampe and Galgamo Chilau are still submerged by floodwaters. The Madampe police launched a boat to rescue a group of children stranded in several homes in the Madampe Galgamo area. One of the officers on board went missing after he was caught by a current. <laughs> The 
The heroism of the police officer who placed the lives of others before his own must not be soon forgotten. A 40-year-old man was killed today when an earth embankment collapsed onto a home in the Navatalvata area in Alawa. Another person was killed when a raft capsized in the Galagamadenia area in Ratnapura. Police say the 50-year-old man, who was a resident of Dompe, had drowned in the floodwaters when the raft capsized. Yet another individual was reported missing after being caught by a current near the Mavulagama Bridge in Panduasnuvara. Several areas in the Kurunagala district are also inundated by floodwaters. The spill gates of the Tabbova, Rajanganya and Dadru Oya reservoirs have been opened as heavy rainfall continues. A correspondent noted that all 20 spill gates of the Tabbova reservoir have been opened to release access water. Sirasa Shakti Sahanayatra aid convoys carrying relief donated by the public for flood stricken communities departed for two districts today. Religious observances were held at the Shah Kimalakya opposite the head office of the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited this morning prior to the departure of the Sahanayatra aid convoys. Subsequently, the Sahanayatra aid convoys departed for the districts of Putlam and Ratnapura at 7 a.m. today. One of the convoys headed to the North Tandia and Mahabhavan administrative divisions in the Putlam district where thousands have been affected by flooding. Heavy rains persisted even as the convoys made their way to their destination. Eight convoys carrying the donations provided by the general public of our country have reached the North Tandia area in the Putlam district. As you can see behind me, there are still water increasing in this area though the rainfall has stopped. Our plan is to get these Aid, the donations provided by you to the people living in this area affected by the adverse weather conditions. We will take this through this road which is completely inundated as far as I can see and take this to the people who are affected in this particular area in the Putlam district. Members of a disaster stricken community gathered in the village of Tumodra anticipating the arrival of the much needed aid. We cannot let our humanity be washed away by the rain. We hope the Sirasa Shakti News First Sahanayatra will help you to weather the storm and work towards rebuilding your lives. One of the Sahanayatra aid convoys distributed aid among the flood-stricken community in Mahabhava in the Putlam district. The aid convoys which departed for the Ratnapura district carrying the donations of the public had to brave treacherous roads to reach flood-stricken communities. Among the worst affected areas was the village of Dambuluana. Officers of the Ratnapura Police Life Saving Unit also joined hands with News First to assist in the distribution of aid. Members of the public rallied today as well, bringing donations for the Sirasa Shakti Sahanyatra convoys to the head office of the MTV MBC network on Braybrook Place. Well, it is important to note that the Sirasa Shakti Sahanyatra aid convoys carrying the aid and relief provided by the general public are still, as we speak, distributing the relief to the flood affected people in the Ratnapura and Putlam districts. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast for the next 36 hours as issued by the Department of Meteorology at 4 p.m. today. Now the, weather, the Department of Meteorology says the prevailing rainy conditions in the southwestern part of the island are expected to continue uh, over the next couple of days as well with fairly strong gusty winds of about 50 kilometers per hour uh, expected over the island. Now the Department says the showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western, southern, uh, suburban more central, northwestern, and northern provinces, while showers are expected in other parts of the country after 2 p.m. Now, the Department of Meteorology does say that heavy falls of about 100 to 150 millimeters are expected in some places in the Saburagamu, um, western, central, and northwestern provinces, and particularly in the Gaul, Matara, Jaffna, and Manar districts, with heavy falls of about 75 
millimeters. Now, the Department of Meteorology says fairly strong wind. Uh, uh, there may be temporary localized strong winds uh, during thunder showers, and it urges the general public to take adequate precautions to avoid and minimize uh, accidents caused by lightning related by, by lightning activity. Now, if you take a look at the screen behind me, uh, as I said before, the, the showers uh, are expected over the southwestern part of the country. Even if you look uh, all the way to the southwestern and the southwestern part of the country, uh, there seems to be a disturbance uh, continuing. As the Department of Meteorology says, the showers are expected to continue over the next couple of days. Uh, the winds are northeasterly. Uh, so as the Meteorology Department said, showers will continue. Now, if you take a look at the landslide warnings issued in several parts of the country, the National Building Research Organ Organization says the code red landslide warning issued a couple of districts like the Ratnapura, Nurelia, Kalutara, Gaul, and K Gaul districts is still in effect. To break it down, uh, in the Ratnapura district, the warning has been issued to the Alapata, Kuruvita, and Ahaligoda administrative divisions, while in the K Gaul district, the code red landslide warning has been issued to the Bulat Kahupitiya, Daraniyagala, Dehiyovita, Ruanvalla, Aranaika, Galigamo, and Mawanalwa uh, divisional secretariat areas. Uh, as for the Nure Elia district, the code red landslide warning has been issued by the NBRO to the Ambagamo, Kotmale, and Nure Elia administrative divisions. Uh, the NBRO also issued the landslide warning to the Kegol district, to the Kalutara district rather, uh, for the Pali Nura, Agalavatta, Bulat Singhala, Ingiria, Walalavita. Uh, divisional secretariat areas, and as for the Gaul district, the National Building Research Organization issued code red landslide warnings to the Alpitya, Kadavat, Satara, Nagoda, Nelua, and Tawalama divisional secretariat areas. Well, that is the weather forecast for the next 36 hours. Uh, the showers uh, experienced in the southwestern part of the country are expected over the next couple of days, while thunder showers are expected in certain places after 2 p.m. It's back to the main news studio. Thank you very much, Shaheen, for that update. Now, following up on the same story, 16 people have lost their lives due to the prevailing inclement weather, which has affected 20 districts of the country. The Disaster Management Centre said that more than 138,000 people have been affected and 53,616 people have been displaced and are currently residing in temporary shelters. At a media briefing convened this evening, the Disaster Management Centre reiterated that the landslide warnings issued previously are still in effect. There have been a minor increase in the water level of the Kalani River at the Nagalagama Street water gauge. There hasn't been heavy rainfall along the Kalu River, so the water level has dropped somewhat. The water levels of the Ging and Nilwala rivers are also declining. The water level of the Mahau air has risen because we have received heavy rainfall in that area. The water level of the Atanagalu Oe is also on the rise as we have had heavy rainfall in the catchment area. While over 100,000 people have been affected by the extreme weather conditions, Education Minister Akira Viraj Karyawasam highlighted a silver lining in the storm clouds today. The minister was speaking at the opening of a new building at the Lakdas Vidyale in Kurunagala. It is raining these days and we may not like it. But the more it rains, there are many benefits for the country. The economic growth rate will pick up and it may increase by about 3% in the future. Do you know that we bear an immense cost to purchase electricity from diesel and thermal power plants? Since it is raining now, we can switch off all these power plants and use hydropower instead. I think we will save more than a billion rupees a day as a result. Similarly, as it continues to rain, the fields will become more fertile. We will see an increased yield for farmers and from the tea, coconut and rubber plantations. If extreme rains bring economic growth, imagine how much the economy should have grown by over the past few years when the rains were so heavy that there were floods everywhere. Is this their analysis? Over 100,000 people have been displaced and the farmers are also despondent. Given the situation, if they are seeing this as a blessing and as a precursor for economic growth, then the economy should have grown tenfold over the past few years. On the one hand, such statements are a joke, and on the other hand, it is very hurtful to the people who are affected by disasters. They have stolen from the central bank with complete arrogance. They have appointed a cabinet that the country cannot bear and there is no program of development. Do not make such partial statements in an attempt to cover this up. He is the General Secretary of the UNP and the Education Minister too. Through his statement, we can arrive at a reasonable conclusion regarding their intelligence and their feelings towards the country. If you wish to truly develop the country, then implement a program that will take the country forward. Do not simply make idle statements from air-conditioned rooms. 
Yesterday, a sloth bear that had attacked a fisherman and the wildlife officers was killed when the wildlife officer opened fire. The Department of Wildlife said the fisherman was seriously injured in the bear attack and that the animal was shot to save the life of the fisherman. What prompted the wildlife officer to shoot dead the bear? At times, we will have to aim our weapons at the animals for the protection of the people. The bear was attacking a person and in order to save his life, we were forced to shoot the bear. It takes time for the tranquilizer to take effect. During that period, the animal can cause serious harm to the person. At such an instance, based on the Fauna and Flora Protection Ordinance, if a person is being seriously harmed by an animal, it is not a crime to kill that animal. The proposed 20th Amendment to the Constitution, consisting of several proposals including abolishing the Executive Presidency, was handed over to the Speaker today. The proposal was handed over by leader of the JVP, Andhra Kumar Desanayake, as a private member's bill. MP Dayasiri Jai Sekara offered an explanation in Parliament today over the allegations raised against him. I wish to state that this incident occurred on the 13th of July 2015. I was not a member of parliament at the time. I was the chief minister of the Northwestern Provincial Council. This was the day I submitted my nomination. I have known Arjun Aloysius of Perpetual Treasuries and his father for many years. Businessmen come forward to help us. We receive their assistance even in the provincial councils when elections come around. I wish to say very clearly that I was not a member of COPE at the time. I was appointed to COPE on the 17th of August 2015. This was a cash check that was not written in my name. I inquired into who cashed this check. Even we do not remember who gave it. I do not know whether it was signed by Arjun Aloysius or someone else. The check had been cashed and the funds were utilized for election campaigning. There are many MPs who have received assistance in this way. I have all the information with me. The report has another 3,000 pages. Submit those 3,000 pages too, and it will reveal who has taken money from Arjun Mahendran and Aloysius. We did not take money from Arjun Mahendran and then work to protect him. We did not write books to cover up this transaction, nor did we go to court, nor will we stand for them. A mud singing campaign has been initiated. During the no-confidence motion, I voted against the Prime Minister. When the debate was ongoing in COPE, the Prime Minister called me. Within the committee, I questioned who it was that ordered the move from direct placement to an auction system. I said the Prime Minister cannot make such decisions. That power is with the monetary board. He called me and asked how I can say that, and that he was the one that made the decisions to go for an auction system in line with the decision of the government. I told him, no sir, we cannot say that this was the decision that was made and sought to correct the inquiry. This was how the Prime Minister spoke to me and we respectfully disregarded his request and stood for what was right. We did not go to protect them in Parliament. We did not do this in the past. Neither will we do it in the future. The Singapore branch of Interpol officially informed the CID, fugitive former Central Bank Governor Arjuna Mahendran is in Singapore. Mahendran was missing after the Bond Commission concluded its sittings. Here's a brief look at what happened regarding Mahendran since his appointment as the Central Bank Governor. Arjuna Mahendran was appointed the Governor of the Central Bank, replacing former Governor Ajit Nivad Kabral on the 23rd of January 2015. 27th February 2015, controversial treasury bond auction takes place. Mahendran visits public debt department and instructs to accept all bids and then instructs to accept just over 10 billion. 10th March 2015. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe appoints a three-member committee known as the Pitipana Committee and the lawyers were known to have strong affiliations with the UNP. 17th March 2015. Prime Minister makes statement in Parliament. He notes the Pitipana Committee clears Mahendran of any wrongdoing. June 2015. Corp of the 7th Parliament, chaired by D.E.W. Gunasekara, was tasked to investigate the bond issue. Parliament dissolved before report was tabled. October 2016. Corp of the 8th Parliament, chaired by Sunil Hanunnetti, investigated the bond issue and found former Central Bank Governor Arjuna Mahendran responsible for the bond issue. 28th October 2016. Mahendran goes overseas. Prime Minister assures he had gone to attend a wedding and will return. 27 January 2017. President appoints Presidential Commission to investigate bond issue. 
After an investigation of 11 long months, the Commission found Arjuna Mahendran is liable and responsible for the loss caused in the bond scam and recommended action be taken against Mahendran to recover the losses. Providing evidence at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry, Arjuna Mahendran said he acted upon the instructions given to him by the Prime Minister. He made a similar statement to News First in 2015 as well. 2nd of February 2018, CID files case over the bond scam, names Arjuna Mahendran as the chief suspect. Twice, the Fort Magistrate issued an order on Arjuna Mahendran to appear before the CID director and provide a statement with regard to the investigations. Fort Magistrate Lanka Jaiwatna issues warrant for the arrest of Arjuna Mahendran. Interpol issued red notice on Arjuna Mahendran. Arjuna Mahendran is now located. Request made to arrest and extradite him to Sri Lanka. The latest revelation is the check that was given to Dayasiri Jaya Sekara by Arjuna Loshis. Dayasiri Jaya Sekara has accepted that. What is the justification he gives for accepting it? He says several other politicians were given money as well. Dayasiri Jaya Sekara must reveal those names. Those who were found to have had telephone conversations and the footnote gang are involved in this. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe had taken measures to protect these individuals. The Prime Minister is aware of everything that was happening. We have serious suspicion that the money that was given to people like Dayasiri Jaya Sekara was the money looted from the bond scam. <laughs> Former MP Tissa Atanayaka called on the Anunayaka of the Askari chapter of the Siam sect, Venerable Vedruve Upalithera, today. The former minister called on Venerable Vedruve Upalithera at the Askari Gedige temple. During the meeting, the former minister presented his autobiography to the Thera. As the president says, because of dirty politicians, they can't develop the country. Even though he says that, it seems that he says that to deceive the voters, shouldn't a method be implemented not to punish theft, but to avoid theft, minister? Actually, the people of this country expected a change will be made as they want. There are countless errors in these changes as well. People are complaining about that. The former minister expressed his views to the media after his meeting with Venerable Vedirwe Upali Thera. We regret to speak about that. The reforms requested by the ground level members, the MPs or the organizers of the party have not happened. If the leaders are thinking that by changing three or four heads in the party you can develop the party, that is suicide. I can only comment on that if he really contests. I think commenting on that without an idea of him contesting in the election is not appropriate. This might be the only chance that he has to put up a fight and to take the leadership and stand for the members of the party. If he misses this chance, it is hard to think that there will be another chance. Therefore, he should also be prepared to lead the party. But everything will not be served on a silver platter. He should embark on a program to get it. An emergency drill was held today centre in the Galevila Base Hospital. The rehearsal caused traffic congestion on the A6 highway. The emergency drill was organized by the Marthale District Disaster Management Center and the Galevela Divisional Secretariat. Shortly after the drill commenced, Deputy Minister of Sustainable Development and Wildlife, Palita Thevara Peruma, who was passing by, stopped at the hospital. The minister, who was unaware that it was only an emergency drill, had offered his vehicle to transport the wounded and was enraged when he realized that it was a drill. <laughs> Tevara Peruma offered some passing remarks as he was leaving the hospital.
News first made inquiries from the divisional secretary of Galevala, M. U. Nishanta. It was a short 15 minute drill. There have been nine fatal accidents on this main road over the past three months. Lives have been destroyed. We plan this to ensure that there is awareness among the public and the staff on how to act in an emergency situation because lives are lost due to lack of knowledge of emergency procedures. This was a drill organized for the people by public officials with financial provisions from the Disaster Management Center. This was a government approved program. There was no inconvenience caused to the patients. The doctors and staff at the hospital and the disaster management staff have been hurt as a result of this incident. Speaking at a media briefing convened today, Deputy Minister of Social Empowerment Ranjan Ramanayaka shared his thoughts on the upcoming election of office bearers for Sri Lanka cricket. We have dropped from 1st to ninth in the cricket rankings. Tilanga Sumtipala is a very well-known bookmaker. He is the owner of a media organization and he also imports sports equipment. This is the bitter truth. UW Sumatipala and Sons is the company. It is not anyone else's son. It is Sumatipala's son. If he is running it with his family, then he is either directly or indirectly involved. The law says any person who is directly or indirectly involved in betting or gaming. This says directly or indirectly, but he is both directly and indirectly involved. He says he is not the owner of a media institution, but he has 100,000 shares under his mother. If he is not the owner of or involved in any way with the newspaper, why is he asking for shares? The election is to be held on the 31st and I maintain that this election is illegal. The people running for office in this election are people who have been accused of corruption and people who have paid fines not only here but also in the court in England. England. This is from the English court from the 23rd of January 1997. Tilanga Sumatipala has been ordered to pay a fine of £29,000. Once again, he has been ordered to pay a fine of £35,640. I will submit this document. He has pleaded guilty before an English court and has paid a fine. <laughs> Several fatalities have been reported from the Jaffna district as a result of unsecured power lines which have been drawn to provide cable TV. Although the private cable TV companies themselves are required to draw lines and place posts in the Jaffna district, these cables have been drawn on transmission posts owned by the Ceylon Electricity Board. As a result of this, several lives were lost as electricity from the power lines had leaked onto the television cables. Such an incident was reported on the 23rd of May from the Nelliadi area in Jaffna. Four more lives were lost in the Wadamarachi North area as well. This is not safe and it is also illegal. These should be stopped immediately. We urge the authorities to remove these lines before more lives are lost. We ask them to pay attention to these unsafe wires. When News First inquired into this matter from the media spokesman of the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy, Sulakshana Javadana said his ministry has not yet received such a complaint and that he will take the necessary steps to probe the matter. And that's a wrap of Primetime News on TV1 for today. Thank you very much for stopping by. Good night.